Hello, I'm Lux. And I'm, like, totally Ember. And this is our thoughts on My Little Pony, Friendship is Magic. Uh, like, Season 8? Episode 4? Fake it till you, like, make it. Dual intro! That's been a while. <laughs> Also, it has been so long since I've done Valley Girl speak. And I was trying to go for the hoity-toity kind of thing. So this episode, the real big issue I have with it is, like, Fluttershy was doing so well! She was adapting her sales techniques to each individual customer, which is personalized customer service. That part's good. Because she, like, was doing it, and she was selling stuff to customers, and she was doing great, but then for some strange reason, I don't know when, she went, let's make them meaner. Well, she said that she thought she needed to kick the characters up a notch, and apparently kicking them up meant making them mean. And now on to the fact that I think that first fashion pony was a reference to someone, because he reminds me of someone I've seen in those fashion shows before on like HGTV, Discovery, you know, one of those places that have those fashion shows. And I don't know who he is. <laughs> so we don't know. Sasame-chan, Family Gourmet, you might know. Please put it in the comments. Or someone else random there in the universe. Go right ahead, we have comments. Please, use them. <laughs> Just keep them civil. Please, if you, if you don't mind. And not to mention that Fluttershy stopped apologizing because at first when she would make a scene of the tea needs to be at a precise temperature, she would turn around and make it clear that, yeah, that was just for the customer's benefit. I appreciate what you're doing. Please fix it. And then she got like so deep into her characters. I don't know that she got so deep into the characters because initially none of the characters were mean. So basically she decided to god mod all her own characters into jerks. I also mean that she seemed to get a little deep into her characters that she couldn't return back to Fluttershy until Rarity literally fired all of her characters. So there was no other way for her to still be in the side the shop unless she was Fluttershy. Also, I, I like how in this episode, it's another moment of like, well, you've done a thousand of these, dear. <laughs> Once again, pointing out how many times Fluttershy has had these be more served lessons. I like the way they're doing it, especially with the way Rarity did it. It's like, Dear, you've got the confidence now. Let's use it. It's like, you know, you've overcome your shyness. You're more assertive. Therefore, I know you can do this. And we got a lot of nice, new, unique clothing and hair options on some of these new base models they've been coming out with for the characters, for the shop, and background ponies. I've noticed a lot of basic body shapes are being reused, but they're adding stuff to them to make them more unique. So no more trifectas of unicorns. Or the same male unicorn pegasus, like, here's our basic body types that, that match the main six, that just put stuff on them. Now they're starting to do taller body types, skinnier body types, squishy body types, big body types. And they have these new base models they can just sprinkle stuff on top of, and it gives a lot of variety. Like that goth pony, and the valley girl pony. She didn't look that valley girl to me. No, I was thinking more punk, maybe? Light punk? Yeah, somewhere in between punk and hippie, if that makes any sense. I can kind of see that. But the hairstyle, I'm thinking, is what kind of gives it more of a valley girl. Or at least modern valley girl. Because me and you, valley girl, is like that classic TV show valley girl from like back in the 90s. So, could be modern valley girl, which we don't really have exposure to. No, because we don't watch a lot of modern tween shows, which is where they would most commonly pop up. Because I, I look at that stuff on the Disney Channel and go, hmm, I, I know you're trying to connect with the young audience, but I think you're completely missing the boat. Though you seem to have good numbers. Because it's the Disney Channel. Parents will put on the Disney Channel and go, okay, anything on here should be okay for our kids to watch because it's Disney. I love how YouTube tried to capture that with their YouTube Kids app, but completely failed because people figured out how to bypass the algorithm by putting some weird stuff on there that got right past the algorithms, but it involved stuff like characters killing each other, characters doing weird stuff, maiming, 
But because it was so light and fluffy and it used a lot of bright colors and the soundtracks were randomly generated by computers, it went right past Google's filters. Which was really too bad. But back to ponies. So where would you like to go next? Well, I like the designs of all of Fluttershy's characters. I'm into darker colors mostly in my wardrobe, so no, I am not goth, but I liked her goth look. Yes, that's my favorite out of the three. My second favorite is actually the Valley Girl-like one. <laughs> I wasn't a big fan of the first one, though. The Valley Girl and the Goth, I like I like those. Those work. Well, the first one very much looked, as she was saying when she first tried it on, it's like, okay, this is business casual attire, which it kind of was. She looked like she was ready to be someone's secretary. At least it wasn't the 80s and she didn't have shoulder pads. That was a fun look. Yes, uh, not to mention what happened when every piece of clothing you went to put on had shoulder pads. Your shirt had shoulder pads, your vest had shoulder pads, and then your blazer had shoulder pads. What are you doing? Auditioning for a football team? That seemed to be part of the theory of giving people more of a square, if not masculine, at least more androgynous shape. Because women going into the workforce, taking on the men, saying that tongue-in-cheek, thank you. And going back to the goth look, speaking of goth look, I am coloring in my wonderful Flutterbat drawing. Enjoy! <laughs> Since I read the synopsis for this episode, it went, hmm, different personalities. I got a drawing for that. Yes, because she was behaving very differently as Flutterbat. And this one was specifically drawn for, I believe, last year's Halloween episode. Or the year before that. I just know it was one of the years where Fluttershy dressed up as the Bat Pony instead of um, actually being the Bat Pony. Ah, for when she dressed up as the Bat Pony, that was last year's Halloween. But back to this current episode, I just thought I'd bring it up so everyone knows why I picked the Flutter Bat drawing. <laughs> what did you think of how they set up the episode? I kind of liked how Rarity was asking Fluttershy last. She literally asked almost everyone in Ponyville. Oh my god, I, I can't believe I forgot about my favorite part of the episode. Well, we kind of got bogged down with the, why did she make her characters mean? Yeah. Also, I have now caught that DJ Pwn3, aka Vinyl Scratch, is actually in the intro now. Walking in front of the castle and near Maud, who is working with the pickaxe on a rock. I also love how she even asked DJ Pwn3. <laughs> Which makes sense, because... DJ Pwn 3 was at the opening. Do you remember the whole thing with the upstairs oh, shop yeah. and the lights and the records? I remember now. Thank you. So the only thing really missing there is her three assistants went with her and Sassy was already gone. Okay, one, if she pulled Sassy, who's running the other... Well, it's still technically in Canterlot. You know, the first shop is the Canterlot Boutique. But still, if Sassy is helping Rarity in Canterlot, who's running the Canterlot shop? Also for the Manhattan shop, she pulled all three assistants, who are the ones that Rainbow Dash hired. Where was the leasing manager's daughter? Because she was also involved in the shop. Because she had those uh, finger spoons for the soup they were serving. Oh, wow, I love your memory, because I completely forgot about that. So I would think that she would have been available, unless she got bored of working at the shop and her dad went, okay, you don't work at the shop anymore. Mm. But that would have been someone else who could have helped, is at least then it wouldn't have been just Fluttershy and the raccoons. I see the points there, but I have a feeling they completely ignored those for the fact that they wanted to tell this story, which... Was what exactly? Be confident in yourself? It was about letting your inner strengths show because that was the whole thing of right at the beginning. You have the inner strength to do this. Let it shine through. And then at the end, yes, you have all the confidence, but we prefer it coming from you yourself. Don't be a different pony to let it shine through. And don't be mean about it. Because like we said before, the characters were working fine until she made them mean. Because at first, all of them were very polite to their customer. And offered the type of interaction that worked well for that customer's needs. It was about tailoring the experience to each customer. 
which is what good customer service does. You find out what the customer needs and if it is possible and reasonable to give it to them to provide it. Also, I'm still trying to figure out, like, did these guys keep coming back to buy more clothes or did they like never leave the shop? The first one had to have come back because he clearly left, talked to Rarity and stuff. Did he come back to buy more because of how good his experience was? Did everyone come back? And then she started being mean to them, which is kind of weird. And wouldn't the shoppers like start questioning what's going on? Because that just seemed odd to me. It's like she kept interacting with the same ponies over and over again. And I'm like, okay. Well, if they had a good first experience, then yeah, they would come back. But dealing with the same ponies, why did she change what she was doing? Because it worked the first time. That's what I'm trying to figure out. Like, What made her start becoming mean? There's no catalyst for it. We should have seen something that she interacted with the customer and being mean to the customer got her a good result. Then there would have been a, oh, we see now she's becoming mean because that seemed to work. Well, there were slight touches of it. When she was in the first outfit and the pony was looking for accessories that were bold and she said, no, how about pointy? And basically grabbed a display of jewelry and stuck it on her head and went, you almost pull this off. Yeah, but what I'm saying is I don't think we saw an interaction with a customer where the customer gave Fluttershy the idea of being mean. No, I don't think that we did either. So that's what I'm trying to figure out. Where did Fluttershy get the idea that being mean was going to give her a good result? Because we're talking about Fluttershy here. Because that's the only part that really bugs me about the episode. Because, yes, Fluttershy can be not nice, but she's usually not behaving that way without cause. Because this also reminds me of the episode when she first ran into Iron Will. Maybe that's where this came from. To be more assertive, she thought be meaner. Because a lot of Iron Will's tactics were actually rude at the least and downright nasty at the worst. Yeah. Now that I think about it, maybe that's where the meanness came from. She started to pull back up the old assertiveness training to get more emphasis in her characters to spice them up a notch. I don't know. It's just that's really the only part that bugs me about this episode. And near the end, I know they were doing it for a joke, but the whole rodent thing started to rub me the wrong way. <laughs> it was supposed to be funny and stuff like that, but like, like you did it too much. Oh, one, they did it a lot, and two, it's really negative name calling. How many times do you have to call someone the same negative name in the same episode? What are you, Diamond Tiara and Silver Spoon and Blank Flanks? Yeah, really. Also, I would love to see them again. See how they're doing. Now that the Humor Crusaders have been doing so well themselves. To see what's going on with Diamond Tiara and Silver Spoon. Is she, like, changing her mother around? Is she, like, helping her dad? What? Is Silver Spoon still her lackey? What's going on? Maybe we'll find out. I hope so. Because uh, I would love to see a reform Silver Spoon and Diamond Tiara. Because we kind of saw that in that episode where the Humor Crusaders got their mark. I haven't really seen it since then, even though we've had several more episodes that have had the Cutie Mark Crusaders, either as a focus or an aside. Maybe this year, since it seems to be focused around teaching and learning. Yeah, I'm wondering if Diamond Tiara and Silver Spoon might end up at the Friendship School. As if it's being headed by an alicorn princess, her father might go, Darling, why don't you go have this princess association? Anything else you'd like to go over about the episode? That's the main thing. It's just that one part that doesn't make sense. It's just kind of there for plot's sake without what I could see as a good build up to it. Because it was working well, and she was still stressed about it, but it was working well. I do like how they showed how exhausting it was at first. That was a nice touch. Well, it goes in the episode title, Fake It Till You Make It. It can be very exhausting to put on a persona. Even when you're acting and it's just acting and everyone knows you're acting, that's still exhausting. I should know because I've acted in stage plays. Multiple times. It can be very exhausting, especially with someone who has a memory like mine. What were we talking about again? Yes, yes. I'd like to introduce you to my co-host, Dr. Samuel Beckett. <laughs> yes, my mind does feel like Swiss cheese sometimes. ADHD can do that to you. But back to 
the pony episode maybe we should start wrapping things up i think so because otherwise we're just going to keep circling around the why was fluttershy being mean what was the catalyst for this because if she is stressed out when you're stressed you usually go back to your base behavior and fluttershy's base behavior is never mean mm -hmm. it's usually ultra shy or i'm very sorry um e excuse me would it be okay if I took that um, piece of cake right there from you? I mean, it looks really tasty. If uh, you don't mind, that is. Like we both said, that particular problem is the biggest problem in this episode for both of us. Because the moment it happened, we were like, we knew this thing was going to happen, but why? Oh, true! <laughs> yes, so Sami Chan, I am doing the pose again. Hensha! <laughs> it's <sighs> morphing time! <laughs> Uh, and this has been our thoughts on My Little Pony, Friendship is Magic, Season 8, Episode 4, Fake It Until You Make It. Thank you for listening. Um, so, yeah, there's a lot of episodes of My Little Pony, and we have a lot of episodes about My Little Pony. So you can watch those. Also, you can uh, subscribe if you haven't already comments we we like comments uh also watch time it, it's always fascinating to suddenly look at our dashboard and go that video came out three months ago and it just got four views in the past 48 hours yay that's that's an awesome surprise thank you everybody or suddenly uh, one particular video of yours that you thought already finished its spike suddenly a month later goes and you're like where did all those views come from thank you also, please do that. Uh, if you enjoy Lex's art, there's more of it all over the place. Check the links. He also takes commissions. And also, you can influence what he draws by making a $1 monthly donation to Patreon. If you still want to help us out financially, but don't want a commission and don't want a recurring charge, check out Coffee. It works in increments of three and no long-term commitments. Thank you to everybody who has watched, liked, subscribed, popped in and out. Hi, bye. <laughs> and in any other way, provided support and feedback to our efforts. Thank you all, and time for snacks. <laughs>